finally get you, <laughs> Sasha, and Heather in the same room, as virtual as it is, um, you know, the five of us have all been very dedicated to educating, uh, changing, and waking up. Not only ourselves, but as many people as we can get, as we can touch, and um, we've all chosen different, to some extent, different avenues for that. And yet, we're at a time where everyone seems to be converging. At least in my perspective, we're coming to the same place on so many levels, and I think we're all starting to see a unified vision. And I know the work that Heather's done is something you're very aware of, and has played some part in how New Earth Nation has looked at the legal side of how we move forward. So can you tell me a little bit about what the paperwork that was done by the One People's Public Trust uh, did for you personally and how it may have um, Influence. influenced the legal framework that you were moving Sure. Through? Well, you know, I, I'm the least qualified person on this call to be speaking to matters of law. I, I am, a, a, as a layman, interested in it. Um, I find law um, in and of itself repugnant to the human soul and to human dignity in much the same way that I find words on paper repugnant to the soul and to human dignity. Uh, we ought not to be contracting with one another in any way, shape or form in our ultimate expression. But insofar as we are trapped in a temporal uh, field of expression which is um, by and large hidden from itself most of the time, uh, we feel the need to look over our shoulder and sleep with one eye open and uh, thereby not trust one another um, with open heart and open mind. And so in that respect, we are trapped in that space. And to that end, the work that the OPPT uh, did with the UCC filings was uh, nothing short of staggering and um, paradigm shifting. And um, I, I hear a lot of people howling with derision at that kind of claim. I, I understand the fabric of skepticism and cynicism. Uh, incidentally, I find that even more repugnant to the human soul and dignity at a time like this when uh, pioneers are trying with every fiber of their being to peer beyond the Hermes veil on behalf of the great unwashed and uh, to be stoned almost to death for doing so um, reflects back on the great unwashed in an unprecedented way. But I digress. The OPPT, UCC filings effectively open the energetic corridor. So let's be clear about this. We are more concerned with the energetics, with the subtle plane, um, with the, the torsion, fractal, scalar, energetic um, spectrum than we are with the temporal realm of expression, which, as I just said, is full of shit most of the time. So in that respect, um, we owe that action, that perfect action, that perfect event, um, we all owe it. It, it's, it's, uh, it, it, seemed the, it is, in some sense, in law terms, the atom seed of the bifurcation, which will now bring about right and proper self-determination and governance and um, so on. So we took that energetic premise um, as, the, um, as the atom seed. What we are hoping to do and intending to do, and certainly are in the process of doing, is establishing um, what we are um, referring to as the International Tribunal for Natural Justice. And to some great extent, um, the UCC filings are uh, embroidered into the fabric of the first step that we take in engendering that International Tribunal for Natural Justice. But the tribunal in and of itself is um, being um, c c composed of um, law experts and people who can speak to the subtleties of law. And so the very first thing we're going to do with that tribunal, and I hope and expect with your blessing and with your involvement, will be to have 
the world through that tribunal look in on the UCC filings and then make a wholesome determination about the, what's that word, legitimacy of the UCC filings. Well, we all know the legitimacy. We all know absolutely what law means and what lawful means and what legitimacy means. But apparently, um, the sentinels of law uh, the judiciaries and legislatures and parliaments and systems that prevail all across the world in 250 odd nation states, corporate nation states, have long forgotten what law means, what legal means, what lawfulness means. So we thank the OPPT, we thank the UCC filings, we thank Heather, we thank the whole crew. That are compartmentalized, that Sasha is centralized at this point. And a lot of them have contacted me throughout the the period that at least that I've been public and now I'm I've watched them I've stayed very observant at the centralization that you've done Sasha and it's beautiful and it is time to go forward and I feel the same way about law <laughs> as you've stated uh, you have a more rock star version of stating it which is really cool so it inherently in its in its tones moves it to and shifts it to the energetics which is where it always has been um, law was just a container and it was a nice management tool when it was useful for us to experience not being who we really be so we could break through find ourselves and have that joy um, I'm really excited to look even deeper and to speak with you on looking at what tools you need help refinement I never want it to go back the way it was I never want to experience it again and I hear that being resounded through action, through words, and through thought of every being, not just on this planet, but in the universe. So here we go. Open door. I'm going to follow your lead, Sasha, as far as this conversation goes, and let's, let's really get into the heart of it. That's unfortunate, because I was planning to follow your lead. Oh, and hold Sasha. on, Sasha. Hold right, Sasha. Hear you. <laughs> uh, let's let's work it out together. Brian, Brian and Lisa um, can, can certainly flank, and Dee, I know, has got some great... Uh, things to say. Good morning, everyone. Virgo Triad here. It is October 17th, 2018, and welcome to another installment of Where Are They Now? In our fifth installment of Where Is the Con or Where Are the Con Artists Now, rather, we are going to be taking a look at Heather and Tucci Giraffe. Some of you may recognize the photo, the person in the photo that you're looking at currently. This is a photo of Heather Antucci Giraffe. Heather Antucci Giraffe is an experienced and seasoned con artist. She has a long history of conning people online. And we're going to take a look at that history right now. No one does this better than Dozik does on his channel in OPPT Exposed. In late 2012, a group calling themselves OPPT went public promising people 10 billion. And things like that. And everyone asked me why 5 billion? And actually there's 10 billion because there was 5 billion in equity. Then there was 5 billion in damages. So every, everyone on the planet, except for those that cause harm, damage to the, the people, everyone has 10 billion. And I said that as very, for a very specific reason because of what I knew was going to come down at the end of the pipeline. Heather's story starts years earlier when she entered, was introduced to sovereign citizen theories. She registered for a Department of Transportation license plate, which was a popular sovereign scam at the time. One of her associates, Charles Miller, spent 11 years in jail for fraud. He was released in 2009. In fact, the UCC filings, which Heather falsely claimed foreclosed all world governments, were filed by Charles C. Miller. Miller's involvement with Heather goes back as far as 2011 when they unsuccessfully tried to prevent Heather's home from being foreclosed upon. Another of Heather's associates is Miles Juleson. 
patients. We have a, a public trust advisor, legally bonded, who is sitting in a prison right now, who helped ferret all the UCC process out. Uh, they try to get Tim to um, get Ed Miles to basically kowtow and fold. And when he didn't succeed and Miles had intel from myself and our banking community, you know, that... Please understand that this video was made over a year ago. Miles served time in jail for fraud and was expected to be released in 2017. But they pushed forward and continued to perpetuate this lie through their alternative media means like YouTube. So I sent a courtesy notice to the mayor of the local council, the minister who has the state debt recovery office as part of his portfolio, and the CEO of the state debt recovery office. And I tied them all in together and I put a very short cover letter on it today. Courtesy notices were one of the first scams promoted by Heather. When that didn't work, they switched to bank fraud. I uh, created what I call the certificate of value to certify my value being secured in three and a half million units. Um, I also gave a letter of intent and um, a foreclosure notice along with the UCC financing statement um, securing all of our value. This scam landed at least one woman in jail after writing bad checks for over $15 million. So that's where we are. I'm going to be setting uh, the banking part. We did in 15 minutes. It will take Caleb and the team that he's working with basically three days to adjust the app. Uh, for the banking part, but everyone has their own accounts, they're responsible for them, and there's a lot of value streams that people can be really creative about, and their investment uh, streams and everything else, but it's all in each of your hands. They also tried creating a software program that would let people access millions of dollars as long as they paid them a monthly fee, and it didn't work. In August, OPPT started the Opal Tour, promising engines that ran on water. Here is the advertisement for the Opal Tour. It ran all over social media. They collected thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. It was all a complete lie. You can read it. The majority of it is in writing anyway. I have the volume turned down to avoid copyright infringement.
In order to finance the trip, they begged supporters for tens of thousands of dollars to buy water-powered motorhomes. By the end of the tour, the RV still ran on gasoline, and they sold them on eBay and pocketed the cash. In early 2014, they begged supporters for more donations so they can move to Morocco with Heather to start a commune. Hello, Lisa Harrison here. It is Thursday, the, what's the date? 30th of January. Wow. Um, and I'm in Morocco. This is my dodgy little room, which I now share with uh, Sherry and Whitney, two of the other presenters on the 5D Media Network. There, Heather starts writing new documents, which they claim will finally allow followers to get billions of dollars with which to pay their bills. They continue asking for donations, which they use to buy or rent lodging in Morocco and pay for expenses. In March, Hope Moore asks supporters for $8,000 to fly to Morocco to build a free energy machine. In the last year, she's gotten over $60,000 to promote her free energy machine. doesn't work. It's an electric motor turning an electric generator. It's an expensive way of increasing your utility bill. And Heather Antucci Giraffe spearheaded scamming the gullible off the internet. Most of you will recognize both of these photos. On your right, it's a photo of Heather Antucci Giraffe. On your left, a photo of Randall Keith Bean. Randall Keith Bean saw a video a video made by someone named Harvey Dent. This is that video. This video can still be found online today and I will place a link in the description so that you can take a look at it for yourself. There's a very specific uploader, YouTuber, that has this video on their channel. Now how Harvey Dent got brought into this situation was a mystery to me until a very short time period ago when I located a specific video on BZ Riggers channel where Harvey Dent and Heather Antucci Giraffe actually have a conversation. I will also link that video in the description below this video. So back to Randall Keith Bean. Randy Bean sees the video that I just showed you and he talks to Heather Antucci about it on Facebook. He has Heather go and look at the video. And according to the testimony that was given in court by Heather Antucci Giraffe, she claims that she saw the video. It coincided with what it was that she knew to be truthful, quote unquote. And therefore she proceeded to assist Randy to fraudulently commit bank fraud to the tune of $10 million. Randy purchased with that money that he took out of USAA Bank on provisional credit. He purchased a $500,000 motorhome, a brand new truck, and several other things. Randall Keith Bean was apprehended shortly after, and 
Shortly after Randall Keith Bean was apprehended, Heather Ann Tucci Giraffe, attempting to try to make it to the White House to speak with Donald J. Trump, was apprehended at in Washington, D.C. Where are they now? Both Heather Ann Tucci Giraffe and Randall Keith Bean were sentenced heavily for federal bank fraud in Knoxville. This is a Knox News um, or USA Today as part of Knox News also article that was written with regards to this particular sentencing. As you can see, there's a picture of Heather Ann Tucci Giraffe here and lots of additional information with regards to the motorhome and the scam itself. Here's the final update for those of you that don't know. Change.org has a petition that's up to free Heather Ann Tucci Giraffe and Randall Keith Bean from their supposed unlawful imprisonment. The imprisonment is not unlawful. The conspiracy to commit money laundering and fraud is there. It has been proven. Even though the change.org petition, which uh, by the way has now been closed, is uh, supposed to be going to Donald Trump in an attempt to try to free them. Their whole claim here makes absolutely no sense. They claim that these are Treasury Direct hidden Social Security trust accounts. These don't exist. They claim they're from HJR 192. HJR 192 was simply a House joint resolution. And it was only about public debt, not the public's debt. For those of you that don't know, public debt is the same as national debt. It does include things like welfare, Social Security, Medicaid, you know, public services, but not individual debt. There's some big misunderstandings with regards to HJR 192, but the main understanding is that these people that fall under the sovereign citizen umbrella, like Heather Ann Tucci Giraffe, they tend to cherry pick laws out of wherever and whatever they can find. Well, this petition is, of course, now closed. It had a total of 2,333 supporters. Heather Ann Tucci Giraffe received almost five years in prison. Randall Keith Bean received over 12. So that is our number five of where are the con artists now. Number five is Heather Ann Tucci Giraffe, a true and seasoned con artist.